Greetings from Canada. We have a lot of snow out there. I'm going to have to go out and shovel. There's at least a couple feet. I'm not looking forward to that. But this is actually the most snow we've had in the whole of winter, I believe. It built up like pretty fast. Anyway, Rob here. Good morning. Greetings from Canada. Cold winter Canada. I have my coffee here. Roll up the rim to win. So that's an awesome thing. At least I'm warm in my house and I don't have to worry about going out, really, except for the shovel. And that's it. So, today's Thursday. I'm going to read Divine Declarations. This is what it's titled. When we open up our printed word of God and come to the first page of Ephesians, many of us will find it well worn from much reading. And that is my Bible, the first of, uh, of Ephesians. It's crazy. This is my concordant version, and it's well used. Probably some of yours is more used than mine. We would probably point to the first chapter of this epistle if we were asked to show where the most precious divine declarations for us today are found, are to be found. Some of us have learned these verses by heart and have been quoting them for in our prayers ever, ever so long, in the evening and in the morning, at times of affliction, distress, and turbulence. Whenever we wanted to see in their proper perspective not only God and his Christ, but also ourselves and others as well, as the events around us go. As long as we are in this body of humiliation, we will always be in need of reminding ourselves over and over of the divine declarations, which are referred to as the sword of the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Whenever we prayerfully concentrate our renewed minds on our celestial blessings, we are leaving the fleshly and soulish level be behind us and are in spirit setting our feet on our celestial allotment. This is why we praise the Supreme with his own sublime words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ. The mysterious mystery. All the blessings are ours jointly and they are in spirit. In order to become thoroughly acquainted with, uh, with them, we will have to uh, make a daily effort studying carefully these words of faith and of the ideal teaching. Perhaps there are few among us who, to whom the celestial blessings still seem to be wrapped up in a mysterious mystery. But all of us will be interested in an article under the, this title, which was published in Volume 21, still available starting on page 561 of The Unsearchable Riches. Even more light is shed upon the topic in our booklet to enlighten all as to the secret. Paul's first Ephesian, Ephesian prayer. Prayerful study of the first half of Ephesians and the above-mentioned commentaries will certainly tell, help toward a fuller realization of the Ephesian secret, which actually is no longer a mystery since Paul was commissioned to enlighten all to all his readers about it. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. So let us join the Apostle in his first Ephesian prayer. To the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, and He that he may be giving us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of God, that we all may perceive what is the expectation of God's calling, what are the riches of the glory of the enjoyment of God's allotment among the saints, what is the transcendent greatness of God's power for us who are believing. Those three points. In the Lord. At the beginning of the second half of Ephesians, Paul is no longer an apostle of Christ Jesus, as in verse, chapter 1, verse 1, nor the prisoner of Christ Jesus, as in chapter 3, verse 1. He is now speaking as a prisoner of the Lord, who entreats his readers to walk worthily of the celestial calling. We will explain on a later occasion why we numbered the three aspects of, Ephes of the Ephesian secret in this order which he has spoken before. He refers to those of the nations who are walking in the vanity of their mind. We, however, should not cause sorrow to, a ho to the Holy Spirit of God, but, but should rather deal graciously among ourselves. To walk in love as imitators of God, as children of light, wisely reclaiming the error. In the first half of, half of the epistle, the apostle had covered our new status as joint enjoyers of the, a celestial allotment, since we are members of a joint body and joint partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. All of this comes under the doctrinal part of Ephesians in chapters 1 through, two, through 3. 
However, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace, making all grow into him and putting on the new humanity, begins with chapter 4. Thus all the blessings which are ours in Christ in chapters 1 through 3 are balanced by our deportment in, the chap in chapters 4 through 6. So deportment, that's our walk in the Lord. And here the pages of our printed word of God, usually slow, less evidence, show what less evidence of the repeated study. Starting with uh, chapter 5, verse 21, our relations with others are dealt with in detail. Paul shows the ideal contact, conduct of the wives, the husbands, the children, the fathers, the slaves, and the masters. Ending with the declaration that there is no partiality with the Lord, since everybody will be requited by him for whatsoever good each one should be doing, whether slave or free. From this statement, it, it would seem that the apostle has, has now covered everything in the line of deportment, or who else might take a special interest in us, and in the fact that we have a celestial status and are supposed to walk accordingly. <clears throat> Spiritual forces in the celestial realms. At this juncture, we rem we are reminded of Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-eight and thirty-nine. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, messengers nor sovereignties nor the present nor what is impending, nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We also recall that Paul had written in the in the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, For I suppose that God demonstrates with us the last apostles as death doomed, for we, are, we become a theater to the world and to messengers. And we might remember that Peter knew of their interest in Christ's sufferings and glories, for he said, Into which messengers are you yearning to peer? And he also knew that messengers and authorities and powers are subject to Jesus Christ who is at the God's right hand in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. For Christ's celestial exaltation was revealed to both Peter and Paul. The existence of celestial authorities and powers, however, were, was, my, was of minor importance to Peter's readers, since their mess, Messiah will have the place of, of the supreme on earth where they will reign with him. Of course, and that's in Peter. Uh, so... God has a celestial place for for us and an earthly place for the apostles and the prophets. So they will reign during the eons on the earth, and we among the celestials. The wicked day, among the most precious divine declarations in Romans, is followed is following chapter five, verse eight and nine. While we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Much rather than being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from indignation through him. And in all this, God is commending his love to us. And as we read before, nothing shall separate us, ever separate us from his love. No messengers, no, nor sovereignties, nor powers, nor height, nor any other creation can wipe out the fact that God himself justifies us and that Christ is pleading for our sakes. God's love remains our treasured possession, even if our lives are filled with affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sore. Nay, in all these we are more than conquering through him who loves us, meaning that our awareness of his love will enable us not only to endure our distresses, but even to enjoy them. And that's hard to do. We can't enjoy when we're going through uh, affliction or distress, can we? It's very hard to do that. But when we focus on God and understand that it is his, his love that counts right through it all, <coughs> then we get some peace and we can actually enjoy him because we know the outcome is going to be worthwhile. So God does not want the hardships of life to overwhelm and conquer us. Our souls will feel them, but our spirits should rise above them in view of God's unshakable love, thus making us more than conquerors in this, this sphere of attack. When even our basic faith in God's love, as shown in justification and conciliation, is in danger of being sub subdued by events around us and powers beyond our perception, how much more antagonistic will be the attitude of certain celestial powers toward us in view of our celestial status? For in spirit we are already seated together among the celestials in Christ Jesus. There is our, there is our allotment. We may enjoy it now if we hold it by faith. 
We shall enter in its tenancy, in fact, when the Lord will call us above, where he is seated at God's right hand up over every power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. The hostile attitude of the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials is due to these facts. Vigilance is also necessary because of the stratagems of the adversary who knows that God, that the God of peace will crush him under our feet swiftly, as Paul wrote in Romans chapter 16 verse 20. These are the reasons why we are supposed to put on the panoply of God in order to withstand and, and stand in the celestial conflict. Here too we may be more than conquerors if we adhere closely to the rules as laid down in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 through 18. Okay, I'm going to stop there. It's nice being here with you folks every day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. I just want to mention one thing. I know you comment on my YouTube channel, and it's, it's hard because I tried commenting back on some of the comments that were given, but uh, I, they, somehow they don't go through. But anyway, I appreciate your comments. I read them. I read all the comments that people have about these, these shows. So it's a wonderful thing that I'm getting feedback and support from you folks. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Thursday on this snowy Alberta day. And we will see you tomorrow, folks. Grace and peace.